Hey, hey, hey. All right, y'all, we are back and we are continuing our predictions for this upcoming NBA season. This video, we're tackling the Western Conference standings. As I mentioned in my Eastern Conference video, again, I have predictions for that side of the bracket as well. I also have another video coming out with the award predictions for the end of season awards. And that one should be a little bit more fun than the standings in my opinion. But anyway, let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into the 15th seed where I have the Portland Trailblazers. Now this one's probably a little obvious. They lose Damian Lillard, um, their best player for the past you know decade or so. They still have a good collection of young talent, but this defense is probably going to be horrendous. Uh, the offense should be fun. They're probably going to be a really fun league pass team. But again, they're in rebuild mode. They're trying to tank and get picks. They just don't really stack up with the other Western Conference teams. They're getting last place. In 14th, I have the Houston Rockets. They won 22 games last year. They're projected 31 and a half wins this season. I think they probably finish somewhere around that win total. Uh, maybe on the lower side. But again, this is a really young team, much like the Trailblazers, but they also have just a bit more experience with them, especially with the additions of Fred Van Vliet and Dylan Brooks. I'm excited for another year of Jalen Green. I'm excited for another year of Jabari Smith, Alpi Shangoon. Again, they have a really fun young core. I'm just not quite sure they are ready to go out and win a bunch of games, again, in a stacked Western Conference. So I think it will be another year of them being in the bottom three of the West, which again, isn't always a bad thing. It's not a bad thing for the Pistons. It's not a bad thing for the Rockets either. And then in the spot ahead of them at 13th, I have another team that won 22 games this last season and that is the San Antonio Spurs. And although they're projected a few less wins than the Houston Rockets, I, I just think that the Wemby impact is not being accounted for enough. Obviously, health will probably be a little bit of a concern for him, this is especially this rookie season and for the majority of his career for the most part. But I do think the odds makers might be doubting just how much of an impact he's going to have on the court, uh, especially defensively. Throw in the fact that the Spurs also have a pretty solid core built around him already with Devin Vassell, Keldon Johnson, uh, Trey Jones is a pretty underrated point guard, Zach Collins is an underrated center. And the fact they're being coached by one of the best coaches in league history in Greg Popovich, I just... Again, they're not going to make the play-in. They might make a push for it at times, but uh, it's still a young team. They still got some stuff to learn. But I do think they finish at least above the Houston Rockets. Then up next at the 12th seed, we have the upstart Utah Jazz. They surprised a lot of people by winning 37 games this past season. They're projected a few less at 35 and a half for this upcoming season. And I think that's a that's a pretty good estimate. They'll, they'll probably regress in terms of actual outcomes of games, but at the same time, they're going to progress as a team. Year 2 of Walker Kessler should be pretty fun. Year 2 of Laurie Markkinen being the main option should be pretty fun. Uh, Taylor Horton Tucker, I'll probably be keeping an eye on him. They still have some other assets they might move around. But at the end of the day, this is still a team rebuilding and reshaping their team. So I don't think they're going to be making the play-in. Again, stacked Western Conference. All in all, they'll probably finish with a similar record than they did last year, which again, isn't a bad thing, but that's just the case. And now is when the fun really starts in the Western Conference because we have 11 teams who are all good enough to be a playoff team, at least like a top eight team in this conference. But obviously there are only 10 spots to make the postseason with the new play-in rules. And the unfortunate team, it really pains me to do this uh, because they're probably one of my favorite teams in the West, but I just don't think the Dallas Mavericks are going to have the firepower and roster construction to compete with the other 10 teams listed above them. I, and I love Luka Doncic. He's probably one of my favorite players in the league. Kyrie Irving. I mean, who knows what's going to happen with that. But the fact they're going to be starting a rookie in Derek Lively and they have Grant Williams as a third option and just a bunch of young guys on their bench, I just don't think it's a realistic year for them to be competing. I've said this in previous videos, but I'm kind of just treating this like a gap year for this Dallas Mavericks team. Uh, I, I'm not expecting much from them this season, but I think they are regrouping for later seasons down the line. But all of that could also change because in 10th place, I have probably the team I had the most difficulty putting in a spot on this list, and that's the New Orleans Pelicans. 
it's just frustrating because this team will go as far as Zion Williamson can take them. Obviously, they played the past couple seasons without him, and they've been a competitive team. But I don't, I don't know. This team just has a lot of question marks for me. Obviously, Zion's health clouds everything a million times by itself. And if he does suffer another major injury, or they just continue to be an injured team in general like they have in years past, I wouldn't be surprised if they're the ones that fall out of the play-in and Dallas takes their spot. But, you know, I'm, I'm making this list assuming that Zion plays around like maybe like 45-50 games. Maybe that's an over-assumption. I don't know at this point. And in ninth place, we have another team that I have been super extremely high on in the past uh, that it now pains me to put them at the back end of the play-in, and it's the Los Angeles Clippers. Now again, much like the Pelicans, this is a team that hasn't always been the healthiest. I think their uh, proverbial window is starting to close as this is the last year they have Kawhi and Paul George on contract. There are all the rumors surrounding the potential James Harden trade, which... If it were to happen, I would obviously move them up in these predictions, but I, it's not looking like it's going to happen anytime soon. And I know Kawhi and PG are old. When, when it comes to playoff time, I'm probably still taking them over a good amount of teams in this Western Conference and teams that I have ahead of them in these predictions. But again, when it comes to the regular season, the Clippers just do not have a good track history of performing well in that area of the game coming in at eighth might be a surprise to some people maybe it's not but i got the sacramento kings they were the favorites of nba media last season you know hashtag like the beam all that good stuff and uh i know there's been a huge discussion around the fact that they were really healthy last year and it was partially because of that continuity that they were able to win so many games and while i definitely do believe in that I think the people that are, you know, using that as a way to discredit them for this upcoming season is also kind of ridiculous. Because Sacramento is, is a good team, and they're also pretty young too. You know, they're not the youngest team, but they're also not the oldest team. Fox and Sabonis should put up, you know, near all-star level numbers again. I'm loving what I'm seeing from Keegan Murray so far in this preseason. I think he's ready for a huge leap. And outside of that, they still have a bunch of good bench pieces that even if they do sustain some injuries, which they, they probably will, at least more than last year, but they have the guys to step in and fill those minutes. And uh, I do think they will, you know, they're not going to be a top four seed again just because stacked western conference but i think even them making the play in people will probably discredit them for that and call last season a mickey mouse run when in reality it's just you know like it, it is the case but at the same time it's not the case if that makes sense and wrapping up the final play in spot at the seventh seed i have the oklahoma city thunder now a lot of people have them pegged as this team that is going to take a huge leap this year and while i would really like to believe in that you know, they won 40 games last year. They're projected to 44 and a half. I think they go over that projection. But again, the six teams ahead of them are just such good teams that already have experience and have matured. And those are two things that this OKC team just does not have yet. Now, I say those things. I don't mean to call this season a disappointment already for the Thunder. I think they get to the play and they get a seven seed. They win the play-in, they get into the playoffs, and they finally play an actual playoff series, which is a huge step in the right direction for this team. I just think some people have to maybe rethink their expectations for what this team is going to be, because they were already pretty good last year. I don't think they're going to take some, you know, plus 10 leap this year, plus 10 win leap. That's just not realistic. So again, I, like, they're going to get better, they're going to progress, they're going to get into the playoffs and probably play a really good, tough series against one of the better teams in the Western Conference, but I just, I, again, I think people need to temper expectations. Now heading into the top six seeds, I have the Memphis Grizzlies, and we just had the Steven Adams news that he's going to be missing this whole season, and that is a way bigger hit to this team than I think most people realize. You know, part of the reason that the Grizzlies kind of sputtered out in last year's playoffs obviously there was the John Morant stuff but they were also missing Steven Adams for the last like couple months of the season and that was huge he's such a big presence in the paint and is a big reason why the Grizzlies can play the way they do and again without him they're gonna have to figure out some new ways they're already missing John Morant for the first 25 games 
Brandon Clark still recovering from the torn Achilles. There are just not a lot of signs of hope for this Grizzlies team right now. Now, ironically enough, I actually had them at the sixth seed before the Steven Adams news broke. While I do think it's a big hit, like I mentioned, I'm going to keep them at the sixth seed just because I don't think they slip into the play-in. Because at the end of the day, this Grizzlies team always finds a way to surprise me. And coming in at the five seed, I have the Golden State Warriors. Now they won 44 games last season, they had the really crazy home and away splits for their record, and they're projected 47 and a half this season, I think they get somewhere around that number, they probably see some regression in home record, and some progression in their road record. Obviously they had the big trade with getting Chris Paul for Jordan Poole, as of now, I think that's going to end up being a pretty lateral move, at least for the near future. You know, they still have Steph Curry, they still have Klay Thompson, they still have Draymond Green. Uh, I'm excited to see what the year looks like for guys like Jonathan Kaminga and Moses Moody, if they get traded, if they finally get some minutes. But yeah, I got them just narrowly missing home court. When it comes to the playoffs, I don't think that'll matter. They're still going to be a threat. They're, I don't, don't get my words twisted again. They're, they're going to be a good team. It's just they're not going to be as good as these other teams in the regular season. And I'm now realizing that I have been talking for way too long, so I'm going to try to wrap up these top four quickly, but at four of the Phoenix Suns, this one's pretty self-explanatory. They have Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, Bradley Beal. This offense is probably going to be historic. Defense might be, uh, might have some issues. <laughs> They're projected to win 52 games. I don't know if they get the 50 wins. Uh, obviously, if they finish fourth, they definitely do not get the 50 wins. I wouldn't be surprised if they get to 50 wins and finish as like a top two seed. I just think there might be some injuries. Their depth isn't that good, at least compared to other contenders. And uh, I mean, no matter where they finish, they're, they're going to be a threat for the title. In third place, this is probably one of my hotter takes, but I have the Minnesota Timberwolves. I am so in on this team. I'm so in on Anthony Edwards. I think Carl Anthony Towns is set up for a nice little revenge season after missing most of last season. Jaden McDaniels just signed a big extension. He's going to be a stud. They got Mike Conley, you know, running point as a veteran point guard. And at the end of the day, this team just has so much depth and so much talent on their bench that I think they're going to be a really, really good regular season team. Playoffs might be a different story, uh, but at the same time, they also were probably the best matchup that the Denver Nuggets played in a full series last playoff so yeah I'm all in on the Timberwolves this might come back to burn me but I'm I'm prepared for it and then just like my Easter Karma's video I'm just gonna reveal the two seed and the one seed at the same time here because fuck the theatrics two seed I have the Denver Nuggets reigning champions as long as Nicole Jokic stays healthy they're gonna be a top two seed they're the only team that I really feel comfortable guaranteeing at least a 50 win season because of how good this conference is. But the team that I feel second most confident about getting a 50 win season are the Los Angeles Lakers. Now they won 43 games last year, they're projected 46 and a half this year, and I think that's pretty preposterous. Obviously, a lot is going to rely on the health of Anthony Davis and LeBron James, but even outside of that, they actually have a competent roster around them now. I, 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 it pains me as a Celtics fan to say this, but I really, really like this Lakers team with Austin Reeves, um, Torian Prince, Jared Vanderbilt, Jackson Hayes, Rui Hachimura, D'Angelo Russell, who will probably be flipped for another player at some point this season, but even if he's not, he's still a solid player. Yeah, at the end of the day, LeBron is a superhuman. We finally saw AD put together a pretty long healthy stretch last season so I'm hoping he's figured something out and can actually stay on the court again because even if he's available for you know like 60 games and they get LeBron for 50 60 games I just like this team is going to be good they're going to be really good defensively they have the offensive firepower now too to also go out and win regular season games again playoffs might be a little bit of a different story but at least regular season wise I just I think they're going to steamroll a lot of teams this year but that will do it. Um, the West, the Western Conference has has been really fun to predict, just because there are a lot of good teams, and it, you know a lot of them are probably going to be separated by one or two wins by the end of the season. So I'm ready for this list to look like absolute dog shit, but that's part of the fun of this. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you on the next one.